Welcome to Inspiration and Transformation from the Banks of the Ganga with Sadvi Bhagwati Saraswati, an American sannyasi living at the Parmarth Nikitan Ashram in Rishikesh, India. Sadvi is president of the Divine Shakti Foundation, a charitable organization bringing education, vocational training, upliftment, and empowerment programs to women and children. Sadvi is also Secretary General of the Global Interfaith Wash Alliance and Director of the world famous International Yoga Festival. Join the musings of an American sannyasi as Sadvi shares the wisdom and teachings of her guru, His Holiness Pujya Swami Chidanand Saraswatiji. Welcome, everyone, to inspiration and transformation from the holy banks of the sacred Ganga River in the land of Rishikesh, India. How to like that which I dislike. Ultimately, the idea is to go beyond both of them. Anybody here surf? Is anybody here? It's okay. Raise your hand. Just a couple people. Anybody? All right. Only a couple. Has anybody ever seen people surfing? Okay. Better. When you surf, they only surf on waves that are going down. So if you watch people who are surfing, what you'll see is they've got their surfboard in their arms. They go up on the wave and right at the very top of the wave, they then stand up on the board and they surf it coming down, right? Surfing can only happen on a wave that is going down. They can't surf up. They ride the wave up and then surf it down. If I'm committed that surfing is my highest goal, well, I need to depend upon waves going down or I can't surf. And I need to depend upon them going down in a very specific way, but For this, all that matters is they must go down. If I'm a business person, I need to depend on the stock market going up, or even if not a business person, but an investor. If I've got money in the stock market, I need it to go up. Only then am I going to get more and more money. But the waves of the ocean, the stock market, It never only goes in one direction. It always up, down, up, down, up, down. It's just, it's the nature of nature. And to try to like everything, the dilemma with that is that it's like saying, so I'm tired of going up and down. I'm tired of likes and dislikes. From now on, I'm going to only go up. Now, it's certainly better than going down. It's better to like everything than to like some things and dislike others. Because if I like it, I've accepted it. And acceptance is a crucial key to living in peace and joy. But ultimately, there's also another place we want to go, which is beyond the way. Because eventually you get tired. Even surfing the best waves at the end of the day, you're tired. Ultimately, the goal is to go into those depths of the ocean where there aren't any waves. It's not about how can I get the best waves. It's about how deeply can I go where there are no waves. And so rather than just focusing on turning my dislikes into likes, it's a great first step, and we'll talk in a moment about how to get there. But more than that, can I focus on being free of both of them? In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna speaks about a a yogi, the wise one, the enlightened one, as one who is who is the same in pleasure, in pain, in success, in failure, and all of these opposites. 
But the yogi's the same. Because he's not, not thrown about by the wave, sometimes up, sometimes down. But grounded and anchored in something that's much deeper than going up and down. The, the joy, the bliss, when we talk about real spiritual joy, it can't be rooted in something I like. Because even if I like it, it's going to end. So I really like this chocolate ice cream cone. It's great. I'm eating it. I like it. Maybe I even love it. So I'm happy. But then it's over. Now I need to find something else I like in order to be happy again. Now maybe I have some pizza. I really like that. Okay, happy again. Now my pizza's over. Now I need a movie I like. Now I need to go out with a friend I like. And we have to keep finding things we like so that we can keep being happy. It gets really tiring. And it pulls you completely off the actual purpose of your life, which is how to be happy right here, right now in a happiness that's not dependent on what I like or don't like, what I have or don't have. And that's what our spiritual practice gives us, is that joy. That's when we pray for that joy. That bliss. It's not about, oh God, let everything I want to happen, happen so then I feel happy. It's, oh God, give me that joy that never fades. Well, if it never fades, it means it cannot be dependent upon something in the outer world because the outer world is always going to go up and down. So sometimes I'll succeed, sometimes I'll fail. Sometimes the flowers in my garden will blossom, sometimes they won't. Sometimes my loved ones who get sick will get better. Sometimes my loved ones who get sick won't get better. This is, this is the nature of life. And so I need my, my inner state to not be dependent on whether I like it or don't like it. And that's what's most important. And so as you're experiencing, what you need to do, it's, it's tricky because when something's happening that we like, we forget to do this. We only remember to do it when we don't like it, and it doesn't work if you only do it half the time. So when you're experiencing joy due to something you like, and when you are experiencing a loss of joy due to something you don't like, in both cases, you have to try to unhook your joy or your distress from that thing in the outer world. So, I'm eating a chocolate ice cream cone. I really like it. I'm happy. Can I stop in the midst of the bite? The moment I realize how happy I am, and unhook that joy from the chocolate ice cream. I'm not saying you have to take the ice cream and throw it away. Keep eating it. No problem. But just take a moment and allow that experience of joy rather than just gobbling it up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Rather than that. Allow that joy to penetrate Places that chocolate ice cream doesn't reach. And you may not always be able to. Because you may find that the joy is actually so shallow that really, unfortunately, no part of your body is able to experience joy other than your tongue. Which is another important lesson. It's another important lesson. At which point, maybe you can find some joy in the sunshine. 
outside. Maybe it's not the ice cream that you can find joy in, but maybe the way that the sun is shining, you can find it. Or if not, maybe you can turn your head and see a beautiful tree. Find some joy in there. But every time you find yourself in a moment of joy due to something you like, stop. Unhook the joy from the object that you think is causing it. And take it as deeply as you can. And actually experience the joy. Because what you'll notice when you do that is that then when you go back to take your next bite of ice cream, it actually will bring you less joy. It's a very beautiful and very interesting phenomenon. The tongue will still love it. But if in between bites you've been able to anchor that joy deeply and find that experience of joy within, the reward on the tongue with the next bite actually is even less, less interesting. And then you do it again the next bite. And just keep doing that as you, as you feel joy in life because you like something. Stop. Even if it's with a loved one. Oh, I'm with my friend or I'm with my spouse or my child or my parent. I'm feeling so much joy. Okay. Stop. Close your eyes. Can you unhook the joy from that physical presence? Can you feel the experience of love and joy within you. Separate from the physical presence of that being. Anchor it within. And then, when you experience things that you don't like, when you're in moments that you don't if you've been doing this in things that do bring joy, in moments that you don't, that aren't so pleasant, you're already going to realize how shallow that unpleasantness is, and it's not going to impact you. You're going to already realize, ah, oh, this is just on this level. And then, now that you've become good at anchoring yourself in joy, so on the outer level, I'm eating really badly cooked Brussels sprouts. Okay, not enjoying it. But can I close my eyes and anchor myself in joy anyway? Of course I can. Then I go back to the unpleasant experience of the Brussels sprouts. No problem. Again, like the ice cream cone, it's limited to my tongue. I'm able to find that joy. Similarly, a person in front of me, maybe not someone who's bringing me joy, but someone who's bringing me difficulty, not liking the situation. But can I, can I find that state of joy within me anyway? Despite the fact that there is someone in front of me who's creating trouble for me? Of course I can. And so you just keep re-anchoring yourself in both times in that presence of joy within the self. And then both that which I like and that which I dislike, oh, they'll stay like these surface level waves. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM radio network. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single... Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with Rain. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. 
please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Welcome back to Inspiration and Transformation. I'm so glad to have you all back here with me. How can we live our inner journey? How do we experience the world inside? It's so interesting because we use words like inside and outside. And it's important in the beginning because you have to focus the mind somewhere. And so either we focus it outside or we focus it inside. And so we move from the outer to the inner. And yet, as you go deep on the inside, as that inside gets deeper and deeper, there is no outside that whole sense of separation between what I'm experiencing on the inside and the world I'm moving through on the outside, that distinction starts to dissipate because you start to feel more and more connected that there no longer is this distinction between inner and outer. And so when you speak about, as the question says, what's our, how to experience the inner journey, how to experience the world inside, once you really are in the world inside, the experience isn't limited to only inside. So, I'll give an example. Let's say I come into the beautiful Ganga Arati ceremony because for me that was <coughs> always the easiest, easiest way to experience that sense of inner connection and bliss. So we'll take that example. Let's say you come into the Ganga Arati. You walk in and you're very focused on the world outside. Maybe you've been shopping in the marketplace. Maybe you really want to buy something and you can't decide this one or that one, this shop or that shop. Maybe you just met some friends for a cup of tea and maybe one of them said something and it's kind of working in your mind what they said. Maybe they told you somebody's been saying something about you that isn't so nice and that's working in the mind, whatever it may be. But you're focused externally. Maybe you ate something and stomach doesn't feel quite so right, so focused on that. Stomach sits inside, but the, the focus is still external. It's material, that physical, physical stomach. So you're focused outside. Then you come in. You sit down. Maybe you close your eyes. If you don't close them, maybe you just allow them to soften as you look out over the waters of Ganga or the beautiful image of Shivji or the Himalayas. And in the environment, sacred mantras are being chanted. Maybe Puja Swamiji is singing. And slowly, 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 you start to find yourself dropping inward. Suddenly what you're going to buy in the market or who you had tea with or who's saying what to whom, or it all just fades away into sort of like the dream world does after you've woken up in the morning. By the time you're in the bathroom brushing your teeth, you can barely even remember what the dream was about. So in the same way, as those mantras are on, 
the chanting is on, the singing is on, slowly you drop inward. Now as you drop inward, maybe that inner experience begins with your breath. Maybe you notice an upsurging of some joy, some bliss. Maybe you find yourself crying. You don't even know why, but maybe tears are just pouring down your cheeks or welling up inside you. But then something very, very interesting and very beautiful happens. After you've been sort of swimming in what feels very much like an inner experience, you've shifted from the outer to the inner. But as that inner gets stronger, it expands. Because the inner world is not confined to the size of my rib cage. I mean, when most of us think, oh, my heart, you think, all right, so I've got, you know, maybe a a foot, 12 inches, 18 inches, 20 inches, whatever it may, may be. I've got kind of that far to expand. But the energy of the heart is not limited to the width of the rib cage. The energy of the self is not limited to to where your skin ends. And so as that experience and awareness grows, it doesn't stop when it hits the skin or stop when it hits a rib or stop. It's not troubled by that at all. It's existing on a completely different plane of existence than your rib cage or your skin. There is no border or boundary. And so that that experience that you're having that begins on the inner, that experience of love, of stillness, of just isness. Sometimes there is no word, it just isness. Experience just is. And it expands and it keeps expanding. And then you may find that your eyes were closed, but you opened them. And this whole world is is part of that same experience. Or even before you open your eyes, suddenly where there used to be people chanting and you singing, suddenly the chanting feels like it's part of you. The singing is part of you. The wind is part of you. That flowing Mother Ganga is part of you. And you start to feel like you can hear her flowing inside you, not just outside of you. And so that experience isn't relegated only to the inner. And so when we speak about an inner journey or an inner experience, don't keep, don't suffocate yourself. Don't keep the vision narrow that it has to somehow exist between, you know, the ventricles and the, and the lungs and the ribs. And it, no. It's inner, meaning that my focus, because our, our physical brains and the attention that we are able to pay, the concentration that we are able to have through our physical brains is limited to moving in one direction at a time. We think we're really, really smart. We're not actually quite that smart. Our brains are wonderfully evolved in many ways, but still quite primitive in other ways. And we can actually only focus on one thing at a time. Even those of us who feel like, oh my God, my mind is in a hundred places. If you really watch, you'll realize at any given moment, it can only be in one place. That experience of being in a hundred places simply means that your brain moves very, very fast from one to the second to the third. So it seems like it's a hundred at once, but actually at any given quick intersection, time, space, right there. You can only be in one place. And so when my focus is outer, I miss the inner. 
And so when we speak about go inward, it means take the intention, the very focused, conscious intention, and shift it, pull it in. Instead of being focused on what you see outside, Instead of being focused on object, on form, on separation, grab that focus. Literally, grab it and turn it inward. But again, when we go inward, it's not about the material inward. So it's not about, oh yeah, my stomach is growling. Oh yeah, there's the pacord I ate at lunch. There's some gas. There's, it's not that. Yeah, that's inside on some level. But that's not what we mean when we say go inward. It means a shift in intention, in focus. From form to content. From packaging to essence. So instead of being focused on the external world as, as object, as separation, as material, and therefore as me as object and material moving through that world. What's my role? Who's being nice to me? Who's being mean? Who's being respectful? Who's not being respectful? Because then, of course, I know who I like, who I don't like. Right? Those who are nice, I like them. Not nice, I don't like them. Those who respect me, I like them. Don't respect me, I don't like them. This is how most of us think. This is that illusion of separation. And that's that focus on form, not content. If I like you because you're nice to me, what does that really mean? It means my ego, my ego structure, the building blocks of this ego, Enjoy having that ego be padded or reinforced or by your words, by your actions, by the way that your eyes look at me, the expression on your face. That's all we're doing. I like you because you're nice to me. That's what it means. Your words, your actions, the expression on your face. reinforce the bricks in the ego structure I've created in a way that it rewards that ego. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just calling it what it is. So that's the way that most of us move through the world. That's the outer or I like this, I want that. Why? Because for whatever reason, I believe that that thing, whether it's a degree or a title or a bracelet or a car or a house, or a person. I want it because it is going to fill me, my role, my identity, my ego structure in some way that reinforces it. Okay. That's outer. That's that's form. Content is The spirit of me, the soul of me, the essence of me, recognizes itself in the essence of you, in the soul of you, in the spirit of you, that that in, in your presence, I am able to drop in to the truth of myself, in a way that perhaps is easier than in the presence of someone else. We all know this. There's certain people we're with, typically spiritual people, typically people dedicated on that path, where you feel in their presence this sense of, ah. And that's the self being able to drop into the self. And so that's a focus on content. 
So when we speak about an inner journey, an inner experience, it's that experience which allows me to be focused on content instead of form, on essence instead of packaging. So an experience in which instead of identifying as my identity, my history, my body, my role, I'm able to experience the truth of who I am. I'm able to experience my essence, my divine essence. I'm able to experience the fact that I don't end where this body ends. So lust is external. Love is internal. Even though it may be another being we're loving or a tree we're loving that may certainly seem external. Lust is exactly in this physical being, exactly where I begin and end. Seeks, wants, desires, something from another physical object, physical being. That's the external. Love is In this experience, in this moment, I am transcending the physical being. In this moment, in this experience, what perhaps through you, through loving you, I am able to tap into within me is an experience of that, which is expansive has nothing to do with the physical being of the other. If that person gets up and goes to the grocery store, you still feel love, right? Anybody fall out of love because the loved one has gotten up and gone gone into the kitchen or gone to the grocery store? Of course not, because it's an internal experience. Lust is dependent upon the physical presence of the other object. Love is internal. You get up, you go to the bathroom, you go to the kitchen, you go to the store, you go to California. I still love you. I still am able to tap into that experience of love within myself. So that inner journey, inner experience is one. that brings us in touch with the truth of who we are, that expansiveness. But it's not relegated to the literal physical inner confines of my body or the brain in my skull. It's an experience through which I interact with the world. Love, consciousness, awareness, These are ways of moving through the world. They're generated inside. But they're ways then that I interact with the world. So don't think that the inner journey, it's not like, oh, go away. I'm, you know, I'm just doing my inner journey. You're part of my inner journey. How I interact with you is my inner journey. If I'm able to do it with consciousness, awareness, love, that's my inner journey. So we begin it inward, but then we allow it to expand into how we interact with the outer. Because truthfully, there is no difference. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM radio network. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? 
In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Like Baldwin with people for the ethical treatment of animals. I grew up loving circuses and other traveling animal shows, but it never occurred to me what life might be like for the animals. Training wild animals to do things they don't understand takes force. Routine discipline with a hook or whip with the heel of a boot shows the animal exactly who's the boss. Don't patronize animal acts. Please contact people for the ethical treatment of animals. 757-622-PETA Welcome back. This is Sadvi Bhagavati Saraswati with inspiration and transformation. How do we free ourselves? Of all of our, this karma from the past, but that's bearing fruit now, and it's going to bear fruit in the future, in our lives. Only by, well, first of all, you can't get rid of the karmic package from the past. That's there. We cannot unfortunately rewind our lives. However, the power of grace, the power of surrender is such, the power of true awareness is such that it actually can come through and wipe out even the past karmic package that's bearing fruit now and going to bear fruit in the future. But most importantly, is not creating more karma. That which I've already created, okay, it's, it's happening. But right now, I'm creating more. Every single thing I do, is creating another karmic fruit. Karma means action. We use the word to act colloquially to mean that which I get, but it's not actually correct. The word karma literally means the action. That which I get is the fruit of the action. So everything I do is going to give me a reaction. Now, Some of it's going to be sweet. We tend to colloquially call that good karma. Some of it's going to be bitter. We tend to call that bad karma. But the truth is, it's neither good nor bad. The universe doesn't have an objective or subjective labeling system. The universe has no preference. for wealth or poverty, success, failure. The universe loves the dry season as much as the rainy season, cold season as much as the warm season, old age as much as youth, gray hair as much as black hair. The universe doesn't have a preference. We have preferences. We see things like poverty, Failure as, oh, that's bad karma. You must have done something bad. You're being punished. But no, it's actually just science. (laughs) Plant an apple seed. You'll get an apple tree. Plant an orange seed. You're going to get an orange tree. But here's where it gets more subtle with karma. They don't cancel each other out. So... If in my past I've done actions that are bearing fruit now and are going to bear fruit in the future as bitter, I may think, oh, well, I'll do a lot of good things now and then they'll all just cancel each other out. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It's not like money in an actual bank account. 
where the deposits cancel out the withdrawals. We have to keep coming back in this body. This is when we talk about samsara, in this, this wheel of birth and death, birth and death, until that karmic bank account is empty. But then, of course, the question is, well, if doing bad things is going to give me negative karma and doing good things is going to give me positive karma, sweet fruit, either way, I've got to come back to reap it. And okay, it's going to be more pleasant to come back and reap the sweet fruit. But if the goal ultimately is not to have to come back, which is theoretically what the goal is. And I say theoretically because my guru and other enlightened masters have said, the body's not the problem. It's not about, I can't wait to be free of this body and then have moksha body is not what keeps me stuck. Most people think, oh, I can't wait to be free of the body. I'll die and then I'll have freedom. I'll have moksha. I'll be free of all my karmic debts. But it's not the body that keeps us stuck. It's the mind. And so you actually can be free even in the body. That's when we talk about jiva mukti. That's what it means. Literally, freedom while in the body. So, if we say, though, that the ultimate goal is not to have to keep coming back, or even to simply experience that obliteration of my karmic package while I'm in the body, how do you do that? You can't not act. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna makes this very clear. He says, you're always acting. Because Arjuna, of course, says, forget it. I don't want to fight this war. I don't want to get the karmic fruit. I'm going to go off into the forest, meditate in a cave. And Lord Krishna says, not so fast. By not doing your duty, you are accruing karmic results. The act of omission is just as much an act as an act of commission. That which I don't do is an act. If you fall down in front of me and I don't pick you up, I've done something. And so Arjun says, well, then what's the answer? Lord Krishna says, you're always acting. Even you sit down, don't act, you're still acting. Because if you're not fulfilling your duty, that's an action. So what's the solution? Right? You could sit here, you could sit on your hands. The mind, of course, is still thinking. But I could sit here, sit on my hands, put earplugs in my ears, close my eyes, have no contact with the outside world, but I'm still accruing this karmic debt. Because I have a duty and I'm not doing it. And that's giving me karmic fruit. So the only way to avoid all of that, Lord Krishna says, is just surrender to me. Just whatever you do, do it as a tool in my hands. Stop thinking you are the doer. Stop thinking it's about you. Stop thinking you're the star of this show. It's not about you. You're not the doer. I'm the doer. Be a tool in my hands with full surrender. Let me work through you. And that's the only way to fully free ourselves is to simply allow the divine to work through us, to let our prayer be, Oh God, use me. 
Use my every breath. Use my every moment. And what's so beautiful to me here also going back to the concept of religion is you take the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, same thing. Oh Lord, make me an instrument of thy mercy. Right? Where there is hatred, let me so love. And he goes through all of it. It's the same teachings. Let me be a tool. Let me be an instrument in the hands of God. So it's not about your religion. It's not about having to change your religion. It's not about having to be an instrument of God in the form of Lord Krishna, if that isn't your religion. It's about being a tool in the hands of the divine. And really allowing our lives, that which we do, that which we think, that which we speak, every breath, to be used for that divine flow. And when you are able to do that, to empty yourself fully of that attachment, of that sense of, me, mine, what's in it for me? What about me? Why is no one appreciating me? Why do I always have to do the dishes all the time? When we are able to empty ourselves of that and just be a tool, that's when we start to break free of all of the karmic bank account that we keep accruing. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM radio network. OM Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Like Baldwin with people for the ethical treatment of animals. I grew up loving circuses and other traveling animal shows, but it never occurred to me what life might be like for the animals. Training wild animals to do things they don't understand takes force. Routine discipline with a hook or whip with the heel of a boot shows the animal exactly who's the boss. Don't patronize animal acts. Please contact people for the ethical treatment of animals. 757-622-PETA Welcome back. This is Sadvi Bhagavati Saraswati with inspiration and transformation. Sariji. Have you ever helped someone with spilling suffering? Have I ever helped someone with? Spilling suffering. Spilling suffering. Like their suffering is spilling over so, because it's so much? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Spilling suffering. I love that. Has anybody else ever had suffering that felt like it was just spilling? That's, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. It is sometimes like spilling suffering. Okay. That which causes suffering is what we think of and speak of as ignorance. Now, it has to be an ignorance in the heart, not just an ignorance in the mind. So it's not the same type of ignorance like you get the wrong answer on a history test or a math test, but an ignorance that's deeper. And it's an ignorance that says, for example... I'm all alone. 
or an ignorance that says, no one loves me. Or an ignorance that says, nothing is going right. Or an ignorance that says, it's not fair. Those sorts of ignorances are the ones that lead to suffering. Now, at the, at the foundation of all of it is the ignorance that says that you are separate from this beautiful, amazing existence. And so, for example, if you knew that all day long you were sitting in mom's lap or in dad's lap all day long and they were just hugging you like this all day long, you'd never suffer. Right? (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) And as we, as we grow older and as we suffer, it's not so much about sitting in our mother or our father's lap. It's about realizing that we're actually sitting in God's lap. And when we don't know that, we feel all alone and we feel very scared. Now, we may think that we feel scared because... In grown-up stress, suffering, spilling, suffering, we think, oh my God, what kind of job am I going to get? Or, oh my God, am I going to make enough money? Or, oh my God, what about that person I'm in competition with? Or, oh my God, we think about it like that, but that isn't really true. It's, It's really caused because we forget. That's why it's ignorance. We forget that we are sitting in God's lap. And so we feel alone, we feel separate, and then we start feeling like we're less than. We look at other people and we say, oh, they're so much smarter than I am. They're so much handsomer than I am. They're so much richer than I am or stronger than I am or better than I am. And we feel very less about ourselves or we feel like it's not fair, and then we suffer. But when we realize that we are sitting in God's lap, when we realize that we have everything, and when you're in mom's lap or dad's lap, right? It's all there. There's nothing you need that isn't there. In the same way, when we realize we're sitting in God's lap and everything is there, then that suffering heals. And so it's not about me healing their suffering. It's about me being also very, very blessed to just be, be used by God, like you use this microphone, to be used by God to help people realize that they are sitting in God's lap. I don't have to put people there. They're already there. They just have to realize. They just have to realize it. Exactly. This brings to a close this hour of inspiration and transformation. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad to be together with you all each week. And I look forward to being together again next Thursday, same time, on Ohm Times Radio.